sending text messages through your app can bring the user experience to the next level. In this lesson, I have an Angular app where users can order a pizza for delivery. My goal is to update the users with a text message every time their order status changes. So when the pizza goes from cooking to on its way, the user gets notified directly in their phone. To handle the text messaging, we're going to use an API called Twilio combined with Firebase Cloud functions. Let's start by learning a little bit more about Twilio from their promo video. Twilio is a global communications platform for developers. With our API and a few lines of code, you can add messaging, voice, and video to your applications in the programming language you already use. So after we sign up for a Twilio account, they're going to assign us a phone number, and we can use that phone number to send text messages to our users. You can sign up without a credit card, and they'll give you a $15 credit to experiment with the API. So once you've signed up, make note of your phone number as well as your API keys, which we're going to use to build the Firebase Cloud function. But before we get to that point, we're first going to build the Angular component for the front end. So I've generated a new component called Pizza Status, and it's going to use the Reactive Forms module, so we need to make sure to add that to the import section in our ng module. We're using a Reactive Form because we need to validate the phone number carefully. When we send it to Twilio, it needs to be in E164 format, which is a string that looks like this, the country code with a plus sign followed by the full 10-digit phone number. So let's see how we can make this possible in the pizza status component. We are going to break the phone number down into four different form inputs, and then when we send the data back to Firebase, it's going to be the fully formatted E164 string. And for this lesson in Firebase, I just have a single test order in there to simulate how this could work. In the component itself, we'll first import the Angular Fire database as well as the reactive form parts that we need. Then we'll set a variable for the form itself and set that to the type of form group, and then order will represent the data in Firebase. Then we can add the Angular Fire database and form builder to the constructor. And during ng on init, we'll build the form, which we'll define here in a second. And then we'll set the order variable to the object that we have saved in Firebase. The next thing I'm going to do is create a helper function to validate the min and max length of any given form input. The reason I'm doing this is to avoid repeating these validators for every single form input. But they're just validating that the input value is a number and that it's within a certain length. From here we'll use form builder to create the actual form. So we create a method called build form, and then we define our number form as a form builder group. Then we define form controls for the country code, the area code, the prefix, and the line number. This will allow us to capture these values in a form input, but we still need to format it as E164. To do that, we can define a getter, and we can just grab the value from the form, then concatenate all the values together in order, and add a plus sign, and we're good to go. Now we can send this value to Firebase when the user submits the form. We already have the order data as a Firebase object observable, so we can just call order.update with the phone number. Now let's put this all together in the HTML. The first thing I do here is set a template variable called pizza based on the order observable. So we do that by calling order async as pizza. Then I want to add a custom class for each possible order state that the pizza can be in. We can do this with the built-in ng class directive in Angular. You use ng-class by passing it an object where the keys in that object are the classes you want to apply, and the value is an expression that resolves to true or false. So here we'll do pizza status submitted, then we'll do the is dark CSS class. Then we'll add a couple more possible statuses such as on its way from the delivery driver and delivered to the end user. Then we're going to jump down here to the reactive form. And we make this form reactive by first adding a form element and then doing form group to our number form that we defined in the TypeScript. Then when this form submitted, we use this ng submit event and we'll update the phone number in Firebase also with that function we defined in the TypeScript. From here, we'll build the actual form inputs and all we have to do is define the form control name attribute that corresponds to the key in the build form function we defined earlier. So that's the country code, area code, etc. Then lastly, we'll add a submit button to the form that is disabled if the form is invalid just to prevent accidental numbers being sent to Firebase. And then we can also use this to send a validation message to the user by just doing ng if along with for number form invalid and number form touched 
which will show the user a validation message if they've started to interact with the form and it's invalid. And the final touch is to show the user the number that the text messages will be sent to after it's been updated in Firebase. So if we go into the app, we can type in the form and we can see we get the red phone number is not valid message until it is valid and then we can actually update it in Firebase. So now everything's in place to start sending text messages, we just need to build the Firebase cloud function. I've added a couple extra buttons here just to make this a little bit easier to show. Whenever these buttons get clicked, they will update the status in Firebase, which will trigger the cloud function and tell Twilio to send the text message. You could also just edit these values manually in the Firebase console if you find that easier. So the first thing you need to do is initialize cloud functions if they're not already. You can do that by running Firebase init. And then once you've done that, we need to set the Twilio API keys as environment variables. We can do that with Firebase functions config set, and you can also just copy and paste this from the full lesson code. From there, make sure you're in the functions directory. Then we can install the Twilio helper package for Node.js with npm install Twilio with the save flag. Okay, now we can go into index.js and build the actual cloud function. We first import the admin database and initialize it with our Firebase config. From there, we can import Twilio and we'll initialize that with the environment variables that we set earlier. Then we also need to set a variable for the phone number that was given to us by Twilio. You could actually set this as an environment variable instead of hard coding it like I am here. Then I'm going to put together another validation function for the E164 format. This time I just check the number against a regular expression that will return true if it meets that pattern. So we'll build the actual cloud function by doing exports text status, and then we'll do a database cloud function that references the status point in the database. So in this case, it's orders with the order push key and then the status property. Then we can use the on update trigger to run this function whenever the value changes, but it won't run the function on create or delete operations, which is exactly what we want. When this function is triggered, we'll first save the order key so we can reference that point in the database to pull all the data for a particular order. So we can do that by running admin database and point it to the order key. So we can pull the order data once, and then once we have that value back, we'll return it to another promise. At this point, we have all the data we need to build the text message and send the API call off to Twilio. So we'll get the current order status, then we'll get the phone number associated with that order, and then we'll run our validation function one more time just so we don't send any unnecessary requests to Twilio. If it's not the right format, we'll just go ahead and throw an error. Then to send a text, all we need to do is define three different values, and that's the text body itself. That's the actual message the end user will see. Then we define the message the number is being sent to, which is the user's number, and the number the message is being sent from, which is our Twilio account phone number. Then to actually make this API call and send the text to the user, we just need to call client messages create and pass it the text message as the argument. This is going to return a promise also, so we can just call then, and at this point we'll also catch any errors. So that's all it takes to start sending text messages to your users. It's pretty simple when you think about how powerful that feature can be. After you deploy the function to Firebase, you should be able to go into the app and update the status, and then you'll see the text message come through on whichever phone number you provided. That's it for SMS text with Twilio. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to get involved in this project, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book as well as one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.